Very excited, number one. Uh, very excited for this season. I've been in professional baseball for 40 years, uh, 20 plus in the major leagues, either as a coach or an advanced scout. Uh, this is my, let's see, third time managed in Torreon 88, Veracruz now here, plus winter ball. But I'm probably more excited about this season than any in my career. Uh, it's actually interesting because I first managed here with the Union Laguna team in 1988 when I was 33. And you can do the math how many years later, here we are again, and I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. Well, you name them. I started out uh, as a minor league coach with Kansas City, uh, went to, uh, into scouting with the, at the time, California Angels, scouted high school, college uh, players was in charge of the whole East Coast United States and Puerto Rico. Um, left uh, the Angels uh, to go to work uh, for the New York Yankees, where I was the field coordinator, coordinator in the minor leagues. Uh, worked for the Yankees for many, many years. Took a year, came down to Mexico to work at the Paste Academy, which was wonderful. I had 48 players, two traveling teams, and 12 umpires in that generation four of those players played in the big leagues. One of them is the manager of the Mexico City Reds this year, Juan Castro, a good friend of mine, um, Osuna, uh, Ismael Valdez, and a left-handed pitcher named Garibay, all pitched in the big leagues out of that generation. So that was very exciting. Uh, worked for the White Sox as a major league advanced scout, spent 13 years with the Los Angeles Dodgers, was a special assistant to the, uh, to the general manager, also did advanced scouting at the time, coordinated major league spring training in uniform during the, uh, the spring before I broke off and did my scouting, trying to figure out how to beat who are we gonna play next, which is what an advanced scout does. Um, you name it, I mean, winter ball, uh, that's another 28 years, ran two academies, one in the Dominican for the Angels, another in the Dominican for the New York Yankees. So just about every job there is in the game, uh, as far as scouting and player development, I've had a chance to do it. Presently you were working at KBO. What yeah. Yeah, how about that? So I ended up, uh, I was working, my last advanced scouting job was Cincinnati and Jim Riggleman. Um, after that ended, we thought we might be back for another year. It didn't work out. Uh, I ended up going to work for uh, one of the teams in Korea, the Samsung Lions, as their international scout. So what basically I did was cover all the AAA leagues and winter ball uh, in search of the foreign players to sign in and go play in the KBO. And interestingly enough, that led to uh, me meeting certain people. And uh, I actually recommended Matt Williams, who'd been my manager with the Washington Nationals when I was uh, his coach in the big leagues, to take uh, a position open with the Kia Tigers. And sure enough, they hired him. And he said, you want to come with me to be the bench coach? And I said, absolutely. So the last two years, actually 22 straight months, I was there working for the Kia Tigers in the KBO, which was a wonderful experience. Uh, a long time away from home, <laughs> but it was really, it was a lot of uh, fun. I, a, a lot of changes in the game, some good, some not so good in my opinion. Uh, baseball is, is, is a wonderful sport, you know. Um, it will continue to be, it has been, it has gone through some, what I consider drastic changes. Uh, and a few of them I'm not real fond of. Uh, I think in the major leagues, we've lost a lot of the skill level. I mean, obviously the players today, they're bigger, stronger, faster. Strength training is a huge part of their development, and it is so here, you know, but there's a lot of mistakes made on the field, fundamentally, uh, as far as the execution of the game. And at some point, I'm afraid that the weight room somehow took the place of what you can do on a baseball field. Now, don't get me wrong. I think strength training is extremely important, but it's not a substitute for the amount of repetitions you take fielding a ground ball, running the bases, hitting. The skills that are involved in playing the game of baseball, you don't improve those skills in the weight room. And I think, you know, that's become a deal where guys are so invested and the front offices are so invested in, you know, we got to strength train. Well, what about the extra work on the field? And I think where that's really affected the game of baseball is with the youth, you know. I mean, now there's so many travel team showcases. All guys do is they go to the gym, they go to the batting cage, they go to a showcase, 
They take 10 swings, try to hit eight home runs. But when the game starts, none of them know how to play. They don't know how to play. And that's what I think we've lost, is the feel for the game. And I think, you know, to some degree, it's made the game somewhat boring. I mean, now it's so much about high-velocity fastballs and, you know, uh, launch angle swings and, and everything that they've come up with. Uh, the last year I was with the Nationals coaching in the big leagues, I believe 20, what, 15, three innings of every major league game. There was nobody touching the bases. It was either a strikeout, a home run, or a walk. Nobody was running around. There was no triples. There was no bunt. There was no hit and run. And that, I think, is a shame. I think it's become boring for a lot of the fans. And that's one of the things I look forward to here. We did a lot of this in Asia because Asia is kind of famous Japan, Korea for small ball, bunt, move runners, hit and run. And we're going to do that here because, you know, we've got Kenneth Vargas, who I've met the last couple of days. I love him. I've seen him play in the minor leagues, big leagues, worked out with him the last two days, throwing BP, hitting him ground balls. We've got power guys. You know, he's been recruited here by uh, Flete and the front office has done a great job, Mr. Cuevas uh, and everybody that works there. So we're going to hit some homers, but we're also going to create some runs. We're not just going to wait to hit home runs. We're going to make things happen. I mean, I got Cade Gata. We've got uh, Alonzo here. These guys can run and we're going to take advantage of their skills. Well, first of all, I love Mexico, okay? I really do. And I've met a, you know, I worked in Mazatlan as a bench coach, uh, managed in Torreon, managed in Veracruz. You know, I know Pepe Mensur. I mean, I, he was the owner, operator, you know, uh, president of the ball club in, in Veracruz. And uh, we've had a good relationship and I enjoy being around him. And uh, like I said, I enjoy Mexico. Um, with my experience level and at my age, it's, it's to be honest, it's a little tough to get a job in Major League Baseball. They're going a different direction with a lot of young people, which is fine. A lot of analytics, you know, but there's also a lot of very good scouts. I know player development people that are not in the game. So this is a good opportunity for me to keep working in a place that I really enjoy for people that I like and that I know. And I think the other thing that's exciting, really, is, you know, the ability to be a team like the, you know, the uh, two nations. Yeah. I mean, how cool is it? It's the only binational team in the world. I mean, how cool is that, right? To have fans on the U.S. side and fans in Mexico. I think it's tremendous, and it's just really exciting. Plus the fact, what a beautiful ballpark, Unitrade. And believe me, Parque de Junta también is really nice. Now we got turf. Really, it, I mean, this is, this is good stuff. Really good. Yeah. Laguna, yeah. Did yeah. You, did you come to Laredo? Yes. Matter of fact, I think I mentioned to you earlier, and I want to say hello to him if he's listening, but there was a great sports uh, writer here at the time that worked for the Laredo Times named Salo Otero. And he actually did an interview on, uh, with me and was in the paper. I still have it cut out, laminated on my wall at home in my office. Wiedemeyer, an American managing in Mexico. At the time, I was 33 years old. <laughs> Do the math 34 years later. We're back. Yeah, but really cool. So we didn't play, though. I mean, I think it was, let me, uh, uh, Salo will have to correct me if I'm wrong. I know we played at Parque de Junta, but I want to believe it was West Martin Field at yeah, the time when we played uh, on this side. Yeah. And, and one of the things that really sticks out in my mind, Zacatillo Guerrero was the manager. And I really thought that guy was cool. I mean, I observed him, you know, to get the feel for Mexicans and managing and trying to emulate some of the uh, mannerisms. Uh, he was somewhat of a role model, if that makes any sense. You know, I just watched the way he handled himself and I was very impressed. I've got actually, I, I gave it to the front office people and I sent it to the coaches. I actually wrote a mission statement as the manager of this team. Uh, and one of the questions I asked is, you know, why can't we win a championship? You know, I don't care if we finished in eighth place last year or seventh, eighth, whatever the hell it was. Why can't we win a championship? You know, there's no reason we can't this year. But first and foremost, we got to go to the post. We get to the playoffs. You know, we get to the playoffs and we'll see what happens. Because as you well know, in a lot of short series type situations in baseball, it really comes down to the pitching a lot of times because you're going to face the best guys from each team. So anything can happen as long as you get to the, to the dance. So that's our, our first priority and goal is to get to the playoffs. We get there, we'll see what happens.